So 2022 is coming to an end and we're looking into 2023. What have you set as goals for coming year? What lessons have you learned that are you going to apply in the next year? And what are you wanting to do in properties? What's going on everybody? It's Landon here from Mortgage HQ. In this video, I wanna share with you this message that I did in our company meeting. I thought a lot of it is actually relevant for you guys as well, because if you're looking into the current market, there are a lot of headwind. We're in a downturn in terms of the property market. We have inflation. We are looking at potential, a lot of unemployment rate to shoot up coming months. But that doesn't mean we have to think negatively how we're going into the year. We can certainly think about things that we'll be in control of to set up ourselves for success for 2023. So in this short presentation, I've just got three bullet points of you. The three things that you need to think about going into 2023 so that you can set yourself up for success. And I put a lot of thoughts into this because at the end of the day, you can set your vision, your mission, your values. Those things only matter if you have the belief that you can achieve it. Because simply put, what you believe in, you'll take action in and your action will lead to results. So hopefully you have already started formulating what you want to achieve in 2023. You have started writing out the action plan. You know, what are you gonna do on a weekly basis, on a daily basis to contribute to those goals and get the results that you want. And this is not something that I made up personally because Muhammad Ali, one of the most famous boxer that everybody should know. And this is a famous picture of him and Sonny Liston. This was a very historic fight where he was an eight to one underdog and he was able to come out on top. Muhammad Ali at the time had a lot of famous quotes. One of them being, if my mind can conceive it, my heart can believe it, then I can achieve it. This is the same principle because if we start with the belief that this is something that is important, that my heart is wanting to believe that I can achieve it, we will be able to achieve it. So what are the three beliefs that you'll need going into 2023? Well, if you're a client of MHQ, I hope that you can spend the time to believe in the journey that we can take you through because this is it right here, the mortgage life cycle. This is not a made up concept because this is something that we have taken clients through and you'll be able to see case studies on our website. You'll be able to see the YouTube videos around the mortgage life cycle. And this is something that I personally am applying, right? Maximization, which is the foundation of how you're gonna set up your financial journey. This is looking at how you're doing your income allocation and looking at your mindset and habits. And then we go into when you get your first mortgage, we want the structure to actually pay it off quickly. And then later on, we want to build up enough equity so that we can expand the portfolio. And then finally, when we have a bit of investment equity, we're able to optimize that for cash flow. Then you can become financially free. This is the journey that we will be able to take you on if you work with us. And the second one is to believe in the team that you have around you because you would want to make sure the five advisors that you have are the people that will live and breathe your goals. Well, if you have heard of that saying, you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with, I truly believe that this is the same when it comes to financial advice. Because if you want to grow your wealth, you better surround yourself with people who actually believe in building wealth for you than just providing a service. If they understand properties and they do properties themselves, you're more likely to succeed in properties. So build a team that is gonna help you achieve your goals and believe that they will help you on that journey. So one of my favorite childhood anime was Dragon Ball Z. Most of the people on this channel, I believe should know what this is. Even the older folks, you might have seen your kids talk about Dragon Ball Z. Now in this anime, there was a time where there was a villain named Majin Buu. He was basically, you know, taking over Earth, right? Like usually there's someone that wants to destroy everything and you know, because of power. So these two young kids, they are genius. They are fighters and they're extremely strong for their age. And what happened was 
they had this opportunity to learn a new technique where they have to merge their power to create new levels of power so that they can go against this margin boom. But when they first learned this technique, they were out of sync and they weren't working together. And so this is the result when they didn't work together, they couldn't get the maximum potential that they have. But when they can work in sync, they're able to transform into this Super Saiyan 3 or if you don't know what Super Saiyan means, basically you're taking your power to the next level. It's kind of like injecting steroids. <laughs> but the moral of this story is that when they're working in sync, you can achieve much greater things. And this is how you should think about the advisors around you. Because if you can find people that believe in the same journey and they're expert in their area, and you're able to work in sync with them, you're gonna achieve much greater outcomes over the long haul. And this saying sort of ties this together because if you wanna go fast, you can go alone. But if you wanna go far, go together. And lastly, we talked about believing in yourself. Now, some of you guys in the channel might notice I'm less about believing in myself, but I have a spiritual belief. I believe in a greater power. And through this greater power, I can achieve all things because they enable us to. But if you don't have a belief, this is something that you should focus on. This concept here is talked about in the Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He talks about being proactive versus reactive the mindset of allowing your circumstances to influence you, you are always in a negative energy state where you allow the circumstance to dictate what you do. And basically your circle of influence gets smaller and smaller. And so you're always feeling out of control. Whereas if you take a proactive approach, instead of allowing your circumstances to dictate what you do, you think about what you are in control of and you will expand that circle of influence. So one simple way to test whether or not you're allowing the circumstances dictate what you're doing is paying attention to your self-talk. Because people who are out of control usually will say something like, I can't because. People who are in control, they'll say, I'll choose to because. They make it a choice opposed to blaming their circumstances. Or they might say something like, that person's really lucky because he started early. That person's lucky because they're smart. And I certainly catch myself thinking in the same way as well. However, when I catch myself doing that, I try to think about the people who are less fortunate who were able to get out of their circumstance. A recent movie that I watched on Netflix that talked about the refugees in the Middle East and there were two sisters, they were athletes, swimmers. And just going through that movie really showed me another side of the world that this is happening. People who are in the country where there are wars going on and they really have to get out. And instead of just allowing that to dictate what they do, they do everything that they can to move forward and it was very inspiring. And so stories like this really allows us to rethink about our situation and see what we can do differently. And lastly, the people who allow their circumstance to dictate what they do, they might say, if only so-and-so did this, or if only I got this and that, then I would be able to do this and that. So the mindset is waiting for certain things to happen first before they would do something. But there's always something we can do to prepare ourselves because there's a famous quote saying that the harder I work, the lucky I get. And it is true for sure. So I love this little post about positive self-talk because positive self-talk has a lot of benefits. And you can see some of these on screen here, healthier immune system, reduced pain, better cardio health, improve mental health, improve self-esteem and so on. And so a simple way to get started to overcoming your negative self-talk is to really monitor your thought patterns. Talk to yourself like you would talk to your best friend because we find ourselves in the situation where we're very good at comforting people, but we're not actually that good at comforting ourselves. And then other things like challenging your thoughts, keeping an eye out on your stress levels, making sure you don't get burnt out, taking that break every two or three months, and always see the glass as half full. You know, those are the things that's gonna make our life better, and also the things that's gonna make 2023 an amazing year. So hopefully you guys found something valuable or positive in this short video. And if you haven't already, I would encourage you to take the time to think about what you wanna achieve in 2023, set some wealth goals. And once you have those financial goals, talk to our team and we'll be able to see how we can help you achieve those. And if you wanna learn more about the mortgage life cycle, check out the video in the description below. This is the journey the framework to financial freedom that might give you more ideas on the goals you can set. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.
my favorite thing about the workshop is um, how simple it is. So language is really easy to understand. So anyone like with no property knowledge can understand what's going on.